This week, our subject, uh, our topic that we're studying for the week, is something called film form. Film form. And as you can see in the sort of subtitle uh, for this lecture, as well as on the weekly homepage, uh, I also am calling it Integrating Film Style and Film Narrative. Integrating Film Style and Film Narrative. And, uh, of course, as you know, we've just finished our four-week unit on film style. Uh, and, as you may also remember, we're going to be spending several weeks talking about film narrative in the second half of the semester. This week is sort of a pivot week in which we're going to look at film style and film narrative together and sort of pivot from style to narrative uh, in, the, in the form of talking about film form. Now, form, if you remember from the very beginning of the semester, the first week of the semester, uh, I talked a little bit about different principles related to uh, art in general, and form was one of those that I discussed briefly then. Form is the configuration of an artwork, or how the different parts of that artwork are arranged. Uh, different, different types of art, uh, different arts, have different sorts of form that are possible with them. You know, a painting has different possibilities formally uh, than a sculpture does, and... Uh, Film, of course, has different formal possibilities than either painting or sculpture or uh, other forms of art. So form in general is how are the parts of the artwork arranged? Uh, how is the artwork in general configured or structured? Structure is one of the things uh, that is part of when we're talking about fo film form. So film form is a combination of stylistic elements, in other words, cinematography, mise-en-scene, sound and editing, and all of the different details of uh, stylistic techniques related to those, combined with narrative elements. Uh, in other words, things related to characters and plot and story uh, and how those elements of narrative fit together. Film form is the combination or the integ integration, how these things fit together, uh, of both elements of style as well as elements of narrative. Stylistic and narrative elements interact with one another in a film. So the narrative elements such as character and plot interact with stylistic elements such as cinematography, mise-en-scene, etc. Uh, narrative elements are conveyed through stylistic elements. In other words, uh, how do we know about a character in a movie? Well, we know about the details of that character through stylistic elements. The costume that the character wears, uh, the figure behavior of the character, uh, both of which uh, you will hopefully remember are aspects of mise-en-scene. There are uh, elements of character that we learn about through the types of shots or the subject camera distances that are used, you know, especially close-ups. We learn about the individual characters in a movie through close-ups that we see of them, as well as uh, things that they do in medium shots and long shots and so forth, and how all of these things are edited together. Uh, and so stylistic elements and narrative elements interact with one another in a movie. There are some elements, both in terms of stylistic elements and narrative elements, that are commonly used uh, in many different movies in more or less the same way, and we call these conventions. Uh, the idea of conventions, like many of them, that we talk about in relation to film is broader than just talking about film. We can talk about conventions as things that are commonly done or are elements of various things that are commonly used in a lot of different uh, individual instances. And so we talk about conventions when we're talking about film form as well. There are certain types of characters that are 
commonly used in many different films, uh, and so those are conventional sorts of characters. Uh, the Something like the shot-reverse-shot pattern of editing is a convention that is just a way of doing things that is commonly used and, uh, and repeatedly used in a lot of different fashions. There are four different pairs of principles that we are looking at this week in relation to film form, and which you have read about in uh, chapter two from the textbook Film Art by Bordwell and Thompson. The first of these is function and motivation. Uh, unlike the other three, I'm sort of putting these two together here sort of out of convenience. Uh, they're not quite as uh, connected to one another as the other three pairs of principles that you see here, uh, but for the sake of convenience I'm, I'm putting function and motivation together as a pair. Then similarity and repetition, difference and variation, and unity and disunity are all pairs of principles that sort of go together. You can't uh, really talk about similarity without talking about repetition as well, and difference and variation, and unity and disunity, the same thing. So uh, we're going to take a look at each of these pairs of principles in turn and and find out what well, what they're all about. To begin with function and motivation. The function of an element is what role does that element fulfill in the film? What purpose does it serve? Purpose is uh, an idea or a term that you can use sort of as a, a synonym for function here. Whatever that element is, whether it's a uh, particular camera angle, whether it's uh, maybe a costume that a person is wearing, uh, whether it is uh, a character in general. Um, when we're talking about function, we're talking about what purpose does that particular element serve in the movie. And all of these principles related to film form can be applied to either stylistic elements or to narrative elements. And so I'll be talking about uh, and using examples from, from either of those categories. So function is uh, the purpose that an element serves in the movie. Motivation is from the perspective of what is happening in the story of the movie, why is this element present in the movie? What justification uh, is there within the context of the story that's being told for that particular element to be there? Uh, so what is the motivation for having that particular element there in the story world or in the narrative of the movie? One way to, uh, to distinguish between these two principles of function and motivation is to think about it in this way. Motivation explains an element's presence. Motivation explains why the thing is there in the first place, and then function explains the element's purpose, explains what it's doing. Motivation explains why it is there, and function explains what it does. So that is one way that you can uh, think about and understand these two principles of function and motivation. The next two pairs, similarity and repetition and difference and variation are pretty straightforward. Uh, similarity and repetition simply deals with elements that are found repeatedly in a film. Sometimes they're exactly the same, uh, and sometimes they're mostly the same. Sometimes something is exactly the same, meaning it is literally repeated. You see something, uh, the exact same thing, uh, multiple times in a movie. Other times you'll see things that are similar, elements that are similar, uh, but maybe not exactly the same in the same way that they are when they're being repeated. And one of the key uh, sort of subsidiary principles related to similarity and repetition is the idea of motif. Uh, any time that you have significant repeated elements in a movie, uh, you have a motif. And you could have uh, a, a wide variety of different things that can qualify as motifs. Uh, you could have uh, something that's mentioned by characters in dialogue again and again. Uh, 
uh, and that would be a motif. You could have something that is a particular color that is used in a variety of different ways in a variety of different fashions in a movie, and that could be a motif. You could have a sound element that is repeated uh, in a number of different ways, and that could be a motif. And in fact, it is from uh, music that the concept of a motif is borrowed uh, by film scholars, by film analysts. Uh, motif comes from music, a, a, a series of notes that are repeated in a musical piece is called a motif, and so that uh, idea is borrowed from music analysis. So one of the things that we look, we can look for when we're analyzing a movie uh, in terms of the principles of film form is something that's repeated uh, that is significant in some fashion, uh, has some thematic meaning, has some importance to the narrative of the movie, uh, or has some visual significance within the context of the movie. And we call that, uh, when we have significant repeated elements like that, we call that a motif. Difference in variation uh, is, as I said, straightforward, sort of in the same way that similarity and repetition is. Uh, things that are different uh, in variations that distinguish repeated elements or provide some contrast between repeated elements. So uh, the principles of difference and variation sort of fit together with similarity and repetition. When something is similar, uh, but not exactly the same, that means that there is some differences amongst uh, the, the items, and we can distinguish between those by talking about similarity and repetition and difference and variation together. You may have uh, things that are similar, but not exactly the same, and so there's variation amongst them in a movie. Uh, so similarity and repetition and difference and variation work hand in hand to create film form. Uh, you know, nothing is exactly the same, or, or use, most of the time uh, the elements are not exactly the same, but they may be similar. And so uh, when they are similar but not exactly the same, we have difference and variation working as a formal principle in that case. The final pair of principles is unity and disunity. Unity and disunity. Now, uh, unity is talking about the degree to which the elements of a film are unified, uh, sort of woven together into a coherent whole. Uh, and to a certain extent, this is something that we can recognize on sort of an instinctive level. Uh, we feel uh, and can sense that the artwork is unified uh, and understand that there's no elements that are left dangling. There's nothing in the artwork that is not an uh, important part of the form. Uh, and here we can make a distinction between narrative unity and artistic unity. Uh, narrative unity would mean that there are no characters, uh, there are no parts of the plot that are left dangling, the, the story is complete, and we figure out everything uh, that is important to know in the course of the story. The story is resolved in a fashion that is satisfying to us as viewers uh, and as, uh, as uh, people watching the movie. Uh, and that doesn't necessarily mean that there aren't some things that are left ambiguous. Uh, there may be some things that are still left ambiguous, uh, but there is nonetheless some unity in the way in which the story has been told. And then artistically, uh, there's nothing that is in the film in terms of uh, stylistic elements that is out of place or uh, has some way in which we are able to sort of make sense of why it's there in the movie. And then, of course, disunity is simply the absence of unity. Uh, if an artwork lacks unity, we can say that uh, it, it is characterized as having disunity. And so all of these different principles of film form sort of go together with one another 
uh, we talk about similarity and repetition and difference and variation uh, as working together. Uh, and depending on how those work together, we can talk of an artwork uh, of a film uh, as being unified or having unity uh, or not being unified and, and ha having disunity. Uh, and then function and motivation play important roles in discussing film form as well.